what we did during this research to change the activity of the worm, we fed the worms with a bit of beer. So 50% of the worms have been made drunk, like tipsy, like this. And the rest were completely sober. Those are the red ones. These creatures dressed in white are scientists, and these other creatures are puppets, helping the scientists explain their study of drunken worms. We observe that if you, if you flush this worm through an array of obstacles, through a maze, uh, you can observe actually that the drunk worms take much more time than the sober worms. So at the end of the day, we were able to sort the, our worms, our living worms, per activity. Now getting worms drunk sounds like the kind of thing you'd resort to after being without power for a few days. But not in this classroom at MIT, where earlier this month, these men accepted a major award for their scientific research. The Ig Nobel Chemistry Prize is awarded to Hess Hermans, Antoine Dublay, Daniel Bonn, and Sander Voterson for using chromatography to separate drunk and sober worms. Yes, the Ig Nobel Prizes. Where across 10 categories, unusual research into things like science, medicine, and technology all get honored annually in this not so serious scientific ceremony. Every Ig Nobel Prize winner has done something that first makes people laugh and then makes them think. That guy's name is Mark. He founded the Ig Nobels back in 1991, and he's also the co-founder of the Annals of Improbable Research, a publication with that very same purpose of making people laugh and think with real research. That's maybe good, bad, important, trivial, valuable, or worthless. Their latest release is a special morbid issue, with the cover featuring an image of a taxidermied squirrel that died after getting its head stuck in a ball. And in this issue, you'll find an entire section dedicated to butt death research, like this study of Brazilian butt lift associated mortality in Florida, complete with this horrifyingly graphic image of a dissected <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. Improbable Research is the organization that puts on these awards. And following four years of remote events thanks to the pandemic, like last year's ceremony held in this phony green screen rowboat that we told you about here on your daily news refresh, please subscribe, it's finally back in person and, well, back with the bits. Among the 2024 award recipients, the winners of the Physiology Prize discovered that many mammals are capable of breathing through their anus. The winners of the Anatomy Prize studied whether hair on people's heads in the Northern Hemisphere swirled in the same direction as people in the Southern Hemisphere. And the winner of the physics prize researched the swimming abilities of a dead trout, noting that a dead trout does live fish things, like flap its tail to the beat of a current. Again, this is all real scientific research. And a dead trout wasn't the only one whose studies were honored posthumously. The Ig Nobel Peace Prize is awarded to the late B.F. Skinner for experiments to see the feasibility of housing live pigeons inside missiles to guide the flight paths of the missiles. Accepting on behalf of B.F. Skinner, here is his daughter, Julie Skinner Vargas. What he did was to teach pigeons to guide missiles towards enemy ships during World War II. The problem was that pilots trying to torpedo enemy ships or to drop bombs on them had to get very close and they would get shot down. So pigeons were more expendable. And so he taught pigeons how to track by pecking very fast for a long period of time, four or five minutes up to half an hour at the target and if the target moved, he would go that and the missile would adjust so that it kept going on the target. These pigeon missile studies, by the way, were done during World War II and published in 1960. And B.F. Skinner died the year before this award ceremony came onto the scene. But hey, better late than never, right? Pigeons, my father found, were much easier to shape than Washington officials. So it was never used. However, later, pigeons tapping on human beings was used to spot survivors at sea because pigeons have excellent 
eyesight. An Ig Nobel Prize, of course, is a play on the Nobel Prize, all of which will get announced in about a month. And while storied Nobel recipients will receive a medal, diploma, and a cash prize in similar fields like physics or medicine, a handful of those real lauded laureates nevertheless attend the Ig Nobels to serve as prize presenters. And that's not to say the same kind of work these Ig Nobel recipients are doing couldn't land them something shinier than a makeshift trophy. Our worm winners, for instance, who took home the chemistry Ig Nobel for chromatopographic separation of active polymer-like worm mixtures by contour length and activity, explain the purpose of studying drunk and sober worms going through a maze. You can have many, many applications. You can ask in general in, uh, in the, for leading system, in, in biological system, how, why we do want to sort uh, system by activity. Uh, one system that I like to take as an example is, for instance, uh, spermatozoids, which are actually elongated uh, uh, living systems. And if you want to, for instance, make sure that uh, the sperm is, uh, is, uh, is working well, is very active, you could use such techniques to, to sort the, the sperm that are very active from the ones that are non-active. And so by studying, uh, by using this living system, which is very easy to manipulate, we could actually learn uh, the rules that were at play, actually, in this research. In addition to the awards, the Ig Nobels also featured songs in a mini opera, a paper airplane deluge, and an eight-year-old girl playing the role of Miss Sweetie Pooh, whose job it was to ensure that the speeches were kept short. To avoid her wrath, I'll keep this brief. Subscribe to At The News Refresh for more weird, interesting, and funny news stories like these in your feed each and every day. Huh, I guess I could have said daily, that's shorter.